Hey everybody, Fetty here. I made this really cool Harley Davidson sign for a good friend of mine. He doesn't know I made it and he's going to be really excited about it when he gets to see it. And on the surface, this may look like just a doggone wooden Harley Davidson sign. But what's really cool about this one is these letters actually glow in the dark. Now the way that I did this, of course I cut it on my CNC machine, then I stained it, then I filled in the engravings with epoxy that had glow powder mixed into it. Now I've seen other videos where people would use the epoxy and glow powder to like fill in the recesses of a table and make it glow in the dark, and it's really cool, but I haven't actually seen anyone use the epoxy and the glow powder to fill in the lettering on a sign, so I'm pretty excited about that. Now I know that we all watch these videos and it's always presented like everything went fine and perfect and it was smooth sailing along the way, but that wasn't the case for me in this project. And as you watch this video, you're going to get a sense that it was filmed over a long period of time. And the reason for that is because I train wrecked it twice before I finally got it right. In fact, I almost gave up on it. So if you take a notion to do a project like this, don't just scroll to the end of this video and think, man, that was cool and I know how to do it now because I'm going to be stopping and talking about some lessons learned along the way that you're really going to want to know, especially if you haven't worked with epoxy a whole lot like I haven't. So as you watch this video, I'm going to be speeding up the parts that I know that you'll get bored with, but I'm going to stop and talk about some of the things that you're going to want to know. So let's go ahead and get started. So once I got it cut on the CNC machine, I took a little wire brush like this and cleaned up all the engravings and sanded it a little bit. Then I came in here with this General Finishes Van Dyke Brown Glaze and put a nice coat of stain on it. It turned out really good. Thank you. 
So then it was time to go ahead and start pouring in the epoxy, and here is lesson learned number one. When you pour that epoxy in those engravings, what happens is that epoxy starts giving off heat as it cures and sets up. And what that causes to happen is the fibers in that wood, and see this is just that old trash board, a white board, it's not real dense anyway. So the fibers in that wood start gassing off and air starts escaping out of those wood fibers. And as that air escapes, it comes up through that epoxy and forms bubbles. So you'll think, okay, this isn't any big deal because like if you've ever poured epoxy on a bar top, bubbles form. But see, those bubbles are from where you mix the epoxy. These bubbles are actually coming out of the wood fibers. And as that epoxy sets up more and more, it gives off more and more heat, which causes more and more bubbles to start gassing off and coming up through that epoxy. So you'll see these bubbles come up and you'll think, okay, it's time to start popping bubbles. So what are you gonna do? The first thing you're gonna do is reach for a heat gun or a blowtorch, just like you see on the videos. And you'll start wearing it out. And then what's that gonna do? That's gonna cause more heat, which is gonna cause more bubbles. <laughs> so pretty soon you'll find yourself chasing these bubbles. Now, if the bubbles would just stay, you know, kind of a reasonable size, like you think of when you think of an epoxy bubble, you could probably deal with that. But what happens, this is one that I actually train wrecked. What happens is those bubbles start getting kind of frothy. And once they start getting frothy, you're done. You just can't get rid of them. There's nothing you can do. And the, the bigger problem is that phenomenon doesn't start occurring until that epoxy is almost set up. Then it's too late. You've just train wrecked your project. So how do you overcome that? You have to seal the wood. So I thought, I'll seal the wood by laying a couple of big old heavy coats of polyacrylic on it. So I laid it to it, put the epoxy in, and I train wrecked project number two. After that, the only other thing that I could think to do is seal it with epoxy. So I got some of the West System epoxy and you know, mixed some up and I just painted it on. And I, I laid it in pretty heavy in the recesses and just painted it on with a sponge brush and I let it set up for a day. I came back and I did it a second time. Really, it probably wouldn't hurt to do it three times. Two worked okay, but I uh, almost had some problems out of two coats of it. So three would have worked perfect, two did all right. So that's what I did.
So once I had all the epoxy poured into the engravings, everything was doing good, but I started getting some bubbles, which I expected that I would, but they weren't out of control. So what did I reach for? Well, it wasn't a heat gun and it wasn't a blowtorch. It was a straw. Now I know that real men don't use straws to drink with, but real men use straws to pop bubbles with. I don't understand the chemistry of it, but something about the carbon dioxide in your lungs, you blow on those bubbles gently and they will pop. So this is how I popped the bubbles. Now luckily, the bubbles weren't out of control so I could keep up with them just using this. I was real careful, of course, not to suck in and real careful not to let my spit run out the end of the straw. But the bubbles were, you know, forming at a rate which I could get rid of them by blowing on them. Once that epoxy set up, I let it cure for about two days. And then I came in here with some of this general finishes, polyacrylic, and I laid several heavy coats on the sign. If you don't have a spray gun, you could do it out of a crackle can and it would do just fine. So to do this project, I spent one day cutting it on the CNC machine and staining it. I spent another day putting the first coat of sealer on it. Another day on the second coat of sealer. Probably should have done another day with a third coat of sealer. A day putting in the epoxy. Two days letting it cure. And a day putting on the poly. So to do a project like this, you're in it seven to eight days. But in the end, I ended up with a really cool and really unique sign that no one else has and my buddy is going to love this thing. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video, maybe learned something, but more importantly, I hope you got some of your own ideas. As always, if you like my videos, remember, give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.